So yay, week number six, we made it to week number six. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm excited. Um, and then um, I think I might have mentioned this last week. I, I think I did, but just in case, um, decided to do one extra week. So next week's week seven, and then we get to have a week eight. So we'll have an eighth family. And then we might have a final session where we just get to look at all of the families um, at once just to play with the flowers and, you know, have a lot of polls if y'all are interested. Yeah, so, a little recap. Yep, a little recap. So um, congratulations to everybody who survived last week's Asteraceae. Like I said, that was the hardest family we've ever done. <laughs> um, so this particular week, um, we're gonna be doing a family that is not quite as hard as Asteraceae, but close. But don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> this is for fun. And this is like so that we get used to looking inside of flowers. Um, this isn't so that we have to memorize a ton of facts or stress out. This is just practice, just practice getting to see our flowers better. So are you all ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. I will, let's see here if I can do this right. I will, oh yeah, duh. I'm silly. I will share my screen. I can never figure out how I'm supposed to. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and, sorry, I'm having a bit of a mom brain today. I'm a little scatterbrained. Share my screen. And, oh, come on. Where are we? Is this it? Okay, there we go. Wonderful. Welcome everybody to week number six, week number this many of plant families in <laughs> and nature journaling. So um, as usual, we will start out with our three or more flowers, although th our three pictures, and everybody can take two minutes to start with just to sketch what you see on our screen. And don't worry, it is not, um, you don't have to get it perfect, just sketch whatever you can. And, um, and then after our two minutes, we will have um, a minute to Hey, sweetheart, um, a minute to do words and numbers added to our pictures. So we can start. Isn't Thank that you. Hilarious, though? We can start. Thank you. I think they grow in a husk.
a few more seconds. Okay, that's our two minutes. So now everybody can take an extra minute to add any observations, any questions, any descriptive words, any words and numbers to your picture. Let's take a few more seconds. And we're good. Let's move on to our second picture. And again, we'll take another two minutes to sketch. And a recommendation I might have is that if this seems overwhelming, try focusing on just one of the little flowers. And then you can sort of block in everything else. Sometimes that makes it a little less overwhelming. So let's take two minutes to sketch. And then after that, we'll take another minute to add any words and numbers to our picture. We'll take a few more seconds. Okay, we'll take an extra minute to add any words and numbers to our picture.
take a couple more seconds. And there's our minute. Before we scroll on to the next one, I'm going to go back one so that folks, if they needed to, could take a quick screenshot of our first one, folks who came in late and, and needed time to draw. All good. Did everybody get their screenshot? I, I can't see. OK, I'm going to move on to the next. Oh, here we go. Cool. And we're going to go, yes, here we go. And this is our third one. So once again, we'll have our two minutes to draw what you see. Take a few more seconds, please. Okay, there's our two minutes. And we'll take one last minute to add any observations, questions, words and numbers to our pictures. Let's take a few more seconds. And that's it. Those are our three pictures. And now, are you all ready to meet our family of the day? <laughs> Only slightly less complicated than Asteraceae, I bring you the celery family. <laughs> um, or as we also call it, APACA or APACE. I've been going back to my old way of calling them now. My mentors would be very disappointed. So yes, I'll try to say it proper. Our APACE, um, and it is named for our celery genus, which is Apium. Um, and I actually didn't know at first that it was for the celery. I, I assumed it had something to do with bees because of the word apiary, which you know is where the, where's where we keep the bees, our bee farming. And that's very apropos because not only bees, but all kinds of pollinators absolutely love this family. Like I thought about it for a while and I thought who pollinates this family? And I thought who doesn't pollinate this family? Um, mostly I see bees, but I have also seen wasps, 
um, like yellow jackets actually eating from it. And I'm kind of like, going, what, even the yellow jackets? Um, I've seen hoverflies. Um, I've seen all sorts of bugs of all kinds going on this one. So all of like a ton of the bugs really, really, really seem to love this family. I haven't seen as many birds or others, but that could just simply be because I haven't observed them yet. So I'm not going to say that they're not, but I just say that if you want to attract a ton of bugs, grow something from this family. And its old name, which I always include um, if, if it has one, because it can be very descriptive, is umbelliferae. And we're going to go over vocabulary in a second, but that is referring to the umbels of this family, which is the arrangement of the flowers. Um, and if you can see here, this kind of curved dome of flowers, think umbrella. And that's how you can remember umbel. But we'll go over that a bit more in a bit um, because these umbels are special compared to some of the others. So here's our basic flower anatomy. I always try to include this diagram just because it's full of the basics. We have our stem here. We have our sepals. Those are those little green things that you sometimes see underneath the flowers. The ones look almost like leaves, but not quite. Um, and then we have our petals here. We have our stamens that make the pollen and we have our pistils that make the seeds. Um, and the way that I remember that is PSSP. Um, pistils make seeds, stamens make pollen. That's how I remember that, PSSP. Um, and so this one, we're kind of going back to a family that looks a little bit more like the basic. Um, we have here, th these are typically very small, at least I have a hard time seeing them. We have five tiny little sepals here um, that are tucked right underneath these petals. We have five petals, not always, but a lot of times I notice that they tend to curl uh, on certain members of that family. So that can sometimes be a bit characteristic. Um, we have five stamens and here in the middle, as you might've noticed with some of the pictures, it looks almost like there's two blobs smooshed together. Those are our two um, united carpels. And carpal is kind of a funny term, um, but it pretty much means that for our pistol, it pretty much has almost like two kind of glommed together. And so the two little bits that you'll see sticking out of here, those are the two different stigmas, um, which are part of the pistols. So they unite down here. And as for the term inferior ovary, I know that we haven't gone over ovaries nearly so much. What makes this an inferior ovary and that's not to give any sort of shade to the plant's self-esteem. The plant should still feel very proud of itself. But inferior in this case means it, it is beneath where the sepals are. So that's how you can tell if an ovary of a plant or the part of the pistil is above where the sepals are, that's called a superior ovary. And if it's beneath, it's an inferior one. And if it's kind of in the middle, I think it's called a partially or partly superior ovary. Um, so that's all that really means. You might remember that we saw this in some of the members of the Rose family too. Yes, Anne. Yes, so you're saying here the parsley family and in the last slide it was the celery family. Is that both? The FEAC? Yeah, same thing. My apologies. Okay. I've written celery here. That is a good catch. I'm glad you caught me. <laughs> okay, so it's a celery family. It is the celery family. Okay, just trying to decide what to put in my salad tonight. <laughs> Well, I mean, that should sort of give it away. This is another member, but I, I should be calling it the celery family because APM. I think that maybe I wrote this down before I remembered about APM. Good catch. <laughs> oh, I see that Celia's got one too. Nice. So it's, it's so convenient that I literally have it growing out the window. So here you go. Perfect. Which one is that? Is that parsley? I, I believe it's the parsley and I can tell by eating. Yeah, it's a parsley, but we also do have, um, my husband also has celery in the garden, and they really look so much alike. Because his celery is very small, and like the big, thick commercial celery, they're really similar. They really are. Actually, that, that, I'm glad that you mentioned that. That brings to mind a good point. I know this is about plant families and our foods, and we're definitely going to go into the ones that we can eat. I should also mention, though, that there are a couple of members of this family. I mean, there's more than just a couple, but there are certain members of this family that are the exact opposite of the ones you would want to eat. One in particular we're going to go over today, because a lot of the members do look rather similar, and I think that this one's especially important to consider because it's a plant where if you eat a single bite, you die. But we'll talk about that a bit later. We want to talk about the edible ones first. Um, so 
a little extra vocabulary. And I want to include this because I promised that I wouldn't have overly much vocabulary, but this is a particular family where we can't avoid it um, because if nothing else, the name umbilifery kind of, you know, includes that. So an umbel, um, an umbel here, this is a flower arrangement or an inflorescence um, where our flowers here, <laughs> They're on tiny little stems that are about equal distant um, from the main stem here. And so you can see that they kind of form, like I was mentioning before, an umbrella shape. Sometimes it can be a bit more flat topped than this, but I just thought that this would be a little easier to see. So this is a simple umbel where you have th your stem and then your flowers kind of exploding off of that one stem. The reason why this family is called umbelliferae is because every single member has compound umbels. It's not the only family that has them, but it's the one where they all have them. So this is one of the biggest characteristics. And compound umbels is where you have a stem that then branches off into more stems that then branches off into even more stems, which then has flowers, compound umbels. Does that make sense? And just because this family couldn't get any more complicated, we have <laughs> our leaves. So. Um, there's different kinds of leaves. Some are called palmate leaves where you just kind of have the leaf kind of all, you know, looking sort of like a hand all together. You have simple leaves where it's one leaf. These are pennate leaves, always compound leaves anyway. Um, and you can sort of think of it the way you might think of a fern where you have little leaflets coming off of one main stem, you see? Then you have bipinnate, which means twice pinnate. So you have a main stem, but then you have more stems coming off and then more leaves on each of those stems. That's just a taste of this family, um, but it's gonna get worse, I apologize. Um, let me see here. And I'm Jasmine, you ask a really, really good question. There's an another bit of vocabulary that I should have included, um, a pistol, both pistols and stamens have parts inside of them. So a pistol has three parts. It has, if you picture a pistol, in fact, I'm gonna go back one slide. If you picture a pistol sort of like a vase here, this part here is the ovary. It's where all of the seeds get made. Then the neck of the vase would be called a style. And then the very tip, which is where the pollen comes, that's called the stigma. Um, and I probably, I will probably try to include a diagram for that one. I just didn't want to overdo it with the vocab. Um, but yeah, the ovary is part of the pistol. So that was a really good question, Jasmine. So like I mentioned, we have our compound umbels for this family, but unfortunately it's more than just bipinnate leaves. Our key characteristics of our APACA are we have our compound umbels each of our flowers, these little tiny flowers in here, quite small flowers, they each have five tiny little sepals, as we said, five petals that sometimes not always curl up, five stamens, and then a pistil, which I guess it's two pistils or two united carpels. And you can see two of the little styles or, or vases of the neck sticking up. But they're not just bipinnate leaves, they're multi-pinnately compound leaves. Some of them can be tripinnate or even quadrupinnate which means that a lot of this family has leaves that look really, really feathery. Not all, mind you. I mean, some of them are a bit less so. Now here, I really must apologize. I was so focused about the poison hemlock and it's impossible to draw multi-pinnately compound leaves that I totally overlooked some of the other leaf shapes in this family. As I said, not all APACE have pinnate leaves. For example, if you look at the base leaves of cilantro, they're likely to be entire and lobed, but they're dissected, very, very dissected. And if you go nearer the top, the leaf form might change to pinnately compound. That's right, the leaf form can change on the very same plant. I know, right? Anyway, I wanted to make sure you all have as complete a picture as possible, which is why I came back to mention the other kinds of leaves. Please carry on and always remember to let the plant that's in front of you tell you. So to give a better example of the kind of leaves we're talking about, <laughs> here's one of my old botanical drawings. So we have one main stem, so that's pinnate. We have a second stem, bipinnate, a third stem, tripinnate. And then if you can see here, little tiny stem fourth. So this is a quadrupinnately compound leaf. And believe me, it's painful to draw 
very painful. So this is a little look at a bit more about the family. You can see that we have our two carpals kind of smooshed together here, like a blob. Um, and I included this because dissecting this flower was so challenging. Um, these little bits here that, that kind of the weird texture you see in the background, that's the actual pulp of the paper it was sitting on. That's how small this flower is. It was ridiculously difficult to dissect. Um, so I'm not sure if it's really easy to see inside of it or not, but you can see how everything else is on top. And you can see one and two right there sticking up, or carpels in the middle. So that's our family. Are there any questions so far? No? OK. In that case, let us go to what foods are in APAC. And here, I want everybody to just join in. Why don't y'all call out what foods do you think we might find in this lovely, complicated compound family? I think dill. Dill, OK. Carrots? What Carrots. What mm -hmm. else? Can I guess the poisonous one you've been hinting at? Yeah. <laughs> Surprise you want to unveil. So go for it. I'm going to guess the poisonous hemlock. You're correct. Absolutely. I guess that, yeah. In fact, this one was Conia maculatum is poison hemlock. That's the one I was studying here in this drawing. And this is one of the, fam of the poison hemlock flowers too that I dissected. Very small plant. To quote my friend Joy Colangelo, it's not that you like remember, or I can't remember her exact quote, but it was something to the effect of, it's not that, that poison hemlock is a plant that you want to remember, it's just that it's a terrible one to forget. <laughs> so you're correct about the poison hemlock. So what else? I've heard dill and carrots, what else? Fennel. Fennel. Do y'all want to see which are in the family? Yeah. yeah. So oh, celery, yeah. we were right about the carrots. We were, yep, definitely this parsley, which, I, which Celia has, and I sort of gave away. The fennel, like you said, also cumin, and also cilantro and coriander. If you picture the leaves, the way that they sometimes look when you go and eat them. Also anise which I guess is not surprising since it tastes so similar to the fennel, but it's also that the seeds look so alike too. Dill, like you were saying, you're right. Caraway and also parsnip. Well, I grow lots of cilantro. I never would have guessed it's part of this family. I mean, what, what is- Go ahead, sorry. What makes it? Because well, the leaves don't look anything like what you just described. And I apologize for being so late tonight. Um, maybe you already said- no, it's totally fine. And and see, not all of the leaves are nearly as crazy as the hemlock leaves. So with the cilantro, they may not be as big or quite as divided up, but you can definitely see that they have that kind of featheriness to them. They have like more serrated, come to think of it. Well, they do, have, they do have serrated leaves, that's true. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if I'm picturing that right. And I am growing carrots too. I have to, I'll just have to, I used to have a lot of fennel in the background, but it's all gone now. The fennel really has that feathery thing down. Come to think of it, I might want to look again at the cilantro leaves because you have a point. I wonder if what they would classify as, and it's been a while since I've looked at them. Good point. So maybe not all of them are quite so so pinnately compound, but it's definitely something to consider that it might be okay. um, for some of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you mentioned that. So I, I don't believe it's edible, but is Queen Anne's lace in that family? It is. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also cow parsnip. Are you going to mention what the ones of the photos you first showed us are? Because I think of all the classes <laughs> so far, of all the photos that you had first showed us, those were the bizarrest <laughs> or okay. hard to guess for me. Those were really Wow, like that. I mean, it looks like a sea creature. <laughs> Doesn't it? Okay, does anybody want to guess what fl what flower this is or what kind of plant this is? I just saw those at Annie's Annuals yesterday, but I can't remember the name. They were really peculiar looking. These are fennel flowers. Really? <laughs> really, really, really up close. 
like I was all up in the flowers business and there was a yellow jacket sitting next to me trying to munch on it in peace. And I was like, nope, I want my picture. But this one <laughs> a few years back. This one, this is again, the poison hemlock. I've been taking a lot of pictures of it lately. You could mm. say I have kind of a, <laughs> not really a fondness for the plant, but a very healthy respect <laughs> for this one plant. So I took pictures of it. And this is also fennel once again. Sorry, I used the same kind of family twice, but I thought this was just too perfect a picture of the compound umbels to resist. So this is also, and you can see here, this will later on become those seeds that sometimes we like to eat. If you look real careful, you can see how they sort of look like the ends of those seeds. So yeah, I'm glad that you asked. And this is a carrot flower. which are really fun. Okay, I think we're about to get to the part that is a lot of people's favorites. Are you all ready? Are you ready to play spot the APACA? Here we go. And Anne, are you ready with the, with the poll? Okay, here we go. Go. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's play spot the APACA round one. And here we can guess and Again, don't worry overly much. Wait, I can't move this thing. Oh, why isn't it moving? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure how to move the... Oh, there, okay, that's better. Um, so yeah, don't worry too much. Like, just guess, but, it, but don't worry about getting it right or wrong. Um, like I said, like I always say, this is more about getting used to looking at the flowers and beginning to look at the patterns and sort of recognize them, but also just enjoying them. So, and, and if you don't know if the poll is covering your flower, um, it's, it's just another window that you can scoot over to the side or you can minimize if it's in the way. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I'll give folks a few more seconds. We've got 10 more seconds. Okay, are you ready? Our answer is, ah, sorry, there. Wait, did it go? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it did, carrot, <laughs> number three. So this is our answer. What told people that this was the APACA? I'm curious. The flower formation, those five. It looked like the fennel to me, all those clusteries. The, it was tough because I thought of B2, but it was sort of a process of elimination. I thought, no, C just looks more clustery, more like that B and A could be other things, but the C really looked like it. Definitely. You can even sort of see here on the side. Can you play Minecraft? Oh, one second, please. <laughs> and, and Jasmine said um, compound umbels, which you can really see yeah. um, the carrot on the right. And I felt like I mm. kind of recognized the one on the left as, um, is that Elysium? <laughs> it was sort yeah. of a process of elimination for me. Where I thought, yeah, it looks like Elysium to me. It is. I apologize for, for bringing one back from a while ago. <laughs> But I always kind of liked the way, I think I remember seeing it for a while and not understanding that it was from the, the mustard family because the shape of the of the inflorescences tricked me as well. But you're right, this is Alyssum. So I have a this question, how come um, parsley wasn't listed in your list of food in the family? It wasn't? It was the very last one, I think. Oh, I must have. No, it, was, it was in there. It, it was. was. I missed it. Was it was the third one on the list. It should have been so. Yes. Okay, my my bad eyes. <laughs> Sorry. But but like you said, Jasmine, compound umbels. So yep, they are. They have the compound umbels, and then you can also sort of see the leaves here, mm -hmm. and see how how pinnately compound they are too. The feathery look to them. Then now I really want to check out the cilantro leaves again. Okay, are you ready for round two? I can yeah. pull some from my garden if you want. <laughs> here is our round two. Uh, 
With that, yep, see those leaves. This one looks like a landslide. Oh yeah. Falling. <laughs> And, and either way, don't worry, because like I said, this is all learning. So let's take another five seconds or so. Okay, are you ready? Here's our answer. Our answer is the middle one, like y'all guessed. This is our fennel leaf again. And this time I liked it because it didn't have the flowers quite ready but you could still see kind of the form before all of the little ones open, sort of like they have their hands closed and ready to just open their fingers. But yeah, um, whoever said about the leaves in the middle, yep, fennel leaves, very feathery looking. This one here is, I believe it's either a garlic or an onion, probably a garlic. And it also kind of has this umbel look to it. It's just that it's a simple umbel and not a compound one. So just one where, where all of the flowers kind of come off, whereas this one has the stem and then more stems. Does anybody remember this one? Is that Cape Ivy? It is, it's Cape Ivy, my other BFF. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready for round two? Here we go. Oh. I mean, three, three, my brain today, sorry, three. Here we go. I think I accidentally made my poll go away. So um, how many um, how many folks have guessed, Anne? We have 14 out of, oh, 15 out of 17. And I, I can't vote because I'm a co-host. So I think we're done and we're looking, we're divided here. We have eight people, nine people for A, two people for B and five people for C. Yep, and I admit this one was a little bit more complicated. Like a runoff. So here we go. Ready for our answer? Here it goes. It was our first one, which is the cilantro flowers. <laughs> have our umbels on them. Um, and yeah, I know that that one was really difficult. Um, this one, because it had all of the little carpels sticking up, which I know was probably confusing. Um, very adorable little ones, but the, but the insides are not right because they should have our little, see we have our, we have our stamens here the way that they would be, but the middle's not right because it should only be two carpels instead of the five. Um, but I can see what, because these also seem to have, you know, branching off flowers like that. And then this one here, it also looks like they're branching off a bunch, but the middle is also once again, not quite the same as the ones that we're used to. This one here is milkweed. And it seems to be set upon by a ton of aphids. But this is milkweed. Whereas this one's our cilantro. And it might be a little bit harder to see it because some of the petals do this kind of weird thing on the outsides. But then in the insides, you can see the curling bits of it. It's a little bit harder to see the stem. But you know that this one is a compound one because all of these flowers um, in different patches coming off of the one stem. So it's a compound one. Really well. Plus we have a little pollinator here. Enjoying We're getting some background. Is that from you, Ive, or is that somebody else? So if, if you're not talking, if you could mute yourself, please. Thanks. Okay, so, so yeah, this is our cilantro, our cilantro flowers and our pollinator. I'm not sure what kind of pollinator. Stephanie's better at knowing this than I am, but 
I want to say it's a hoverfly, but I don't want to say something wrong, so I'm not totally sure. But um, are you all ready for round number four? Yeah. Here we go. Final round. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Final round. Let's take maybe another 10 seconds to guess. And again, don't worry about whether you guessed it right or not. All of this is just learning. And it takes it can take years to learn how to identify the families, right? I mean, it's taken me years to learn and I can only identify a few families correctly, maybe 30 or so tops. And there's hundreds in the world. And it takes years to learn this stuff. So don't 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 be hard on yourself, okay? This is all for fun. Okay. We're ready? Our answer is our middle one here, our poison hemlock. I guessed correct, yay. And I included this one. I know, I apologize that there's so many pictures of poison hemlock in here, but I think it's really important that people know what it looks like because it's so poisonous. This is the plant that, as some of you might already know, Socrates was forced to ingest and it killed him. Um, and you can't really see it very well, Sometimes one of the things that can help you tell is that their stems have splotches of red on it amidst the green, but that's not always the case depending on how much sunlight it gets. So that's why I didn't necessarily include that as a, as a telltale thing. It also has a really horrible smell. I don't know why people like it, but they think that they mistake it sometimes for carrot, wild carrot. Um, this one here is a sneak preview for a family that we're gonna do. I'm not gonna give it away though, but this is just a sneak peek. But does anybody happen to know what this plant is? There's a particular friend of mine who was studying this one recently, I think. Is it a uh, Ceanothus? Yes, it is Ceanothus. Who, wait, who is the one who said that? Oh, I, I did, Celia, but Jasmine got it right too. Yep. I think she put that in the text. Nice, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you both saw. Yeah, I, I'd recently seen Jasmine's um, amazing photography with an up close look at this particular flower. This is a different family, but it has but it has equally interesting flowers too. So if anybody ever gets a chance to look up close and personal to a Ceanothus, do so. This is an amazing one. This is part of Remnaceae though, so it's a different family. But yeah, this is our poison hemlock. So I think that's it um, for our wrap up, for our wrap up here, our recap. Um, we have our compound umbels. Um, we have our small little flowers here with our five tiny, very hard to see sepals, our five petals that are sometimes curled, but as you can see also from the cilantro, not necessarily, sometimes they have these weird like flat petals. Um, we have our five stamens and then we have our two carpels kind of sticking up here. And when you see from overhead, it kind of looks like globs that kind of got jammed together. And often, but not always multipinnately compound leaves. Um, and that is it for this. There we go. Um, Ivea, Ivea yeah. um, did you say there was two families? That, I mean, there was two plants that were poisonous in this family or just one? Oh, there's a lot of poisonous plants in this family. Oh, okay. But the, um, but I, but the one that I know the best is the poison hemlock. Oh, also, okay. There's also the water hemlock. And one thing about this family is that it has these leaves um, and not even just the poison ones, sometimes even the ones that we eat, certain members of this family have compounds on their leaves that are activated by the sun. And if you're susceptible, you might get a bit of a rash when you're dealing with this family, um, even the ones that are not poisonous. 